Hi, this is Shannon Tidwell, Garden Girl at Two Peas in a Bucket, and I'm back again with another 213 in 2013 video for you. As you probably know, 213 in 2013 is a weekly video series with myself and three other garden girls. So each week we have four to five different prompts for you. So by the end of 2013, you'll have 213 creative prompts to get you going on your next project. This week I've got a little bit more of a traditional layout for you. It's using holiday photos as well as more than one photo on the page. So let's get started. I've had this new ruffle paper by KI Memories burning hole in my pocket and I really wanted to use it. So I'm going to incorporate it on this layout. First I just wanted to show it to you so you could get a close up look at it. But you can see that the Little butterflies are kind of like die cut shapes that are stitched on already for you. You can flip them up so they kind of float off the page or you can leave them flat. And I thought a good way to keep them from getting too flat if you wanted to leave the dimension but you wanted it to make sure it stayed there when it was in your album, you could put little pop dots under some of the butterfly wings. That way they'll be sure to stay dimensional. So let's go ahead and jump into our first prompt. Our first one is to scrap a holiday. And I've chosen these photos from my daughter's Easter egg hunt at school. And I've kind of gathered the photos that I took that day and kind of deciding which ones I want to use. I pulled out the one that was with her and her friend. And I think I just want to concentrate on her for this layout, maybe do a separate layout about her and her friend. So right now I've got two focal photos that I'm going to start with. And on to prompt two, we're gonna use a yellow background. I wanted to change it up a little bit this time. I've gotten so used to using kind of neutral background papers and I decided that I wanted to use a color and I felt like this yellow really went along with the theme of my photos. And I kind of like how those little shapes are sort of like little egg shapes. So even though it was hard not to reach for a chevron pattern, I tried to step out of the, my little box a little bit and go with a yellow background in a different pattern that I normally use. Both of these papers are L Studio. I just love this flower pattern paper, but unfortunately it doesn't go with the butterfly paper that I've already decided that I wanted to use. But on the back side, it has a nice turquoise text print that I think will really go nicely with the other papers I've chosen as well as my photos. And actually my background kind of fell together easily because I already had this butterfly paper cut to those dimensions and I really like how the, those papers stack together in there. So I'm just gonna trim those down to fit like that so I don't waste any of that pretty flower paper on the back of the turquoise. I can use it on another layout. I'm gonna go ahead and stack these papers together and get them adhered down onto the page. Okay, so now I've got my background set, I'm gonna start thinking about my photos. And since my background is so busy, I'm definitely going to have to figure out some separation between the photos and the background. So that's where I'm going to go next. And I've found this really nice neutral grid paper. It's also an L Studio paper. I just really like this white look to it with the gray lines. I think it'll go nicely with the background I already have going. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that down to map my photos. Okay, I've got that trimmed down, but now looking at it, it definitely needs a little something extra to that grid pattern just to kind of make it stand out just a little bit, just enough. So what I'm going to do is grab my little spritzers. These are the Heidi Swap ones. I really like them because they have that metallic sheen to them. So I'm using a pink one and I'm just going to randomly drop the drops all around. So I'm adding the pink first and then I'm going to go back and add some teal drops as well. While I'm waiting for my mist to dry over there, I'm going to go back to my background and work on it just a little bit. I want to add some trim between the layers of the papers, just kind of add a little separation between those patterns. So I'm going to start with some navy dot washi tape. And then you just can't go wrong with a little bit of silver glitter trim. Not to mention that it matches the silver trim that's in one of the photos that my daughter's holding that cute little chip egg. So I think that my little photo mat is just about dry. I'm not the most patient scrapper, so it's dry enough. But I'm going to go ahead and get that laid down and see what it looks like with my photos. I decided that it needed a little extra around the edge, so I added some stitching just with some gray thread around the edge. 
I'm gonna lay out the photos, kind of play around with those two photos, figuring out how I wanna layer them together, which one I think should be on the left or right. And then I definitely need to figure out how I'm gonna use my supporting photos. I know that I need them to be smaller and I found this fun little Polaroid type frame. There are several manufacturers that make similar products, so I'll be sure to link you up to those. As you can see, I just kind of keep playing around with the photos, trying to figure out the best placement of them. Um, I kind of want to cover up that other little girl that's in the picture, but I don't want to trim down my photo any because I don't want to lose any off the top. So I'm going to kind of strategically place my um, supporting photos and cover that up. And here's where I decide that I'm going to go ahead and add in that fourth photo of the Easter basket. And I'm going to do the same thing with the little frame, the Polaroid frame, and trim it down. So that brings us to our third prompt of the day, and that is to use at least four photos on your layout. So you can do like I did and trim a couple of those down and use them as just supporting photos for your focal photos on your page. So you don't have to do four four by sixes. You can trim those down smaller and that way it's easier to fit more on the page. Once I got those photos laid out, I noticed that there wasn't quite enough splatter showing around the edge of my mat. So I went back again and I'm gonna add some more drops around the edge. And I'm also going to go ahead and add some silver tinsel spray as well. I found this fun vellum by L Studio nearby on my desk and I thought I would add a neat layer behind my photo mat. So that's what I really love about vellum is that you can add it in and it's like a light layer. It doesn't add too much busyness to the layout since it's see-through, but just kind of adds a little fluff to the page and just a little extra interest to the page. Okay, now it's time to make a commitment and get these photos adhered down. You can see that I use my same old trick of adding some pop dots under a couple of the photos. I'm using them under the main focal photo of her, and then I'm also using them under one of the little Polaroid frames. I just like how it kind of makes one pop up over the other one, helps the layering a little bit. Okay, now that I've got my background and my photos pretty much situated, I'm gonna start concentrating on the embellishments. I found this fun little bow, silver bow by Heidi Swap on my desk, and I thought it would go nicely with the silver trim as well as the silver trim in the photo. And then a fun little L Studio circle tag that I thought would be neat tucked behind the photos for my journaling. I like how it pops up behind there with the same turquoise color I've been using. And then I'm also going to cut one of these little flags by L Studio. You can see that I've got a pile of L Studio on my desk today, I guess. But um, I love this turquoise color once again, and I'm gonna tuck it in behind the paper clip, just so it kinda floats off the page and off the um, photo. And here I'm gonna scrap lift myself a, a little bit. I did this just yesterday on a different layout. I used this pattern paper by L Studio and used the triangles on there as a guide to cut a banner out of the pattern paper. So when I first started cutting this, I envisioned it going up there in the top left corner of the layout. But as you can see, after I get it cut, I decide that it would be better used to kind of fill that white space on the right photo there. And that brings us to our fourth prompt to fill the white space on a photo with embellishments. So you can see I decide to move those little banner triangles down there. I'm gonna kinda just trash the bigger one that I cut and layer those three smaller ones in there across that space on the top of the photo. And now I wanna add some color to those Polaroid frames. I grabbed a stack of washi tapes that I thought might work. I really wanna use this confetti one, but it's not gonna work on this layout. So I settled with this gray striped washi tape that I use quite frequently. I just really love that neutral color, kind of works with everything. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of cut a banner notch in one end of it and then wrap the tape around one side. Then I'm gonna use a similar tape on the other photo frame. This one's kind of a pink and yellow stripe, I guess, and I'm gonna do the same thing, notch it on one end and then wrap it around the other end. You can see that I'm going opposite directions with my tape strips. 
I think that just kind of helps the eye move to the middle there. If they're going the same direction, then your eye would kind of follow both of those the same way off. But this way, they're kind of holds them together in a sense. Okay, now I'm revisiting the little banner up there at the top. I feel like it needs kind of a finishing touch to it, but since I've already got the photos adhered and I want that journaling behind it, I can't really do any machine stitching across it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these cute little ruffle borders by KI Memories. So I'm going to go ahead and trim them off of the clear background. It just kind of helps me figure out the placement on the page without having to make the commitment. So I'm going to trim that border down to the size I need, still with the backing on it, and get it placed before I pull the backing off. And that way, because it is a really sticky backing, so you can't really pull it back off without ripping your paper. So that way I can get it just right before making that commitment. Alrighty, moving on to the title. I know that I want the title to go down there in that left bottom corner, but it would be too busy with the butterfly background to kind of put the letter stickers right on top of that. So I found another piece of vellum from L Studio that I'm gonna trim down to kind of a flag shape just so it kind of adds a little bit of extra interest to it. And also do some machine stitching around it just so it has a finished edge to it. And that'll be a great place to base my title because it's still sheer where I can see the butterflies behind it, but it'll have a nice base for my title. I'm kind of feeling like these Polaroid frames need a little bit of dressing up. So I've grabbed a stack of enamel dots. These are by Basic Gray. Again, several manufacturers make similar products, so I'll link them down below for you at um, two peas in a bucket. But um, I'm gonna kind of confetti, I guess, that top right-hand corner of that frame and in the video, I kind of I just do this one frame, but after I finished the video, I decided that the other frame needed a few little confetti dots as well. So I'll, you can see in the final photos of the layout, the finished product with the dots on the left one too. And now I'm gonna skip back over and start working on my title. I love these chunky silver glitter letter stickers from American Crafts, and that's what I'm gonna use for the main word of my title. And I'm kind of just gonna stack together several different letter stickers to spell out our little Easter chick. I had a little bit of the extra border, that ruffle border from KI Memories that I used up above. So I'm just gonna trim off just a little piece of it and kind of add it to the title there to so dress that up a little bit, add a little color to the title flag there. And now I'm going to work on the journaling. And just the final touches to the layout. I'm going to use some little silver letter stickers to add 2013 to one of the tape borders I have there on that photo. And then as you saw earlier, I did add the confetti to the tape border on the left Polaroid frame. One thing that's not on camera too is I found a cute little chick sticker that was actually an older doodle bug sticker and I put a pop dot underneath it, and then I'm gonna stick it right there next to the 2013. So that completes my layout for this week's 213 and 2013. Your four prompts this week are, one, to scrapbook a holiday, two, to use a yellow background, three, to use at least four photos on your page, and the last one is to fill the white space on a photo with embellishments. I hope that you will join in on the challenges this month and upload your layout to the gallery. Make sure to check mark 213 and 2013 so you have a chance to win a prize. Thanks again. This is Shannon Tidwell, Garden Girl at Two Peas in a Bucket.